I'll be honest, this project has been a long time coming. It's perfect timing. We have the technology, we have the personal knowledge to actually get it done, and also I have the motivation to actually record it this time. So, we're gonna 3D print a spoiler for my Miata. I'll be honest, this is not my first rodeo when it comes to actually making parts for my car. When it comes to 3D printing, uh, they failed spectacularly. Mostly because, hey, cars are complicated and not flat panels. They've all got compound curves and stuff. That has been the main limiting factor to the things I actually can make. So we're gonna have to actually use technology to make a model of the back of the car. I could go online and probably buy a model of a Miata that someone made and use that as the base to go and design the spoiler. I don't trust it and I wanna do it myself. So we're gonna try photogrammetry. I am no expert on this. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I learn everything about this on the internet. Take everything I say with a grain of salt and we're gonna be learning how to do this together. Photogrammetry is where you take a bunch of photos of an object and you take all those photos and you put them into an application that uses math to go and stitch them together and make a 3D model of what picture is of. For this project, I'll be using Kiri Engine, which is K-I-R-I. It just has you take about 70 photos of the object. Let's go and see what the results are. So this is what I did last night. I covered the entire back of this trunk in masking tape. Photogrammetry doesn't like shiny surfaces, so I just covered it in cheap masking tape, and then I put little dots on there for tracking. I hope that it actually might, you know, help the accuracy of the 3D model that will be created with the program. Another thing I did was that I created little marks uh, on the corners that are measured from the screws that uh, I guess the, the hard top would screw to. Uh, that right there is exactly, I don't know, 22 inches or something like that uh, from that head of that screw and that just gives me a place to go and know how to go and orient this once I do get it into 3D space. Another thing I did is that everything pretty much has to go around this third brake light so I did make sure that the brake light and the center line were actually documented. So now that we're this far with it we have to go and take a bunch of photos using the photogrammetry program. Uh, I think there's some where you take the photos yourself and then you can go throw them in there. Uh, with Kiri Engine it is pretty much open the app and take a bunch of photos so I'm going to do that now and I'm not going to record it because the neighbors are already looking at me weird. So I took about 140 photos. Kiri Engine lets you take about 70 per project. So I did two separate projects. The models on this look amazing. They can be exported as OBJs. This is a version of it right here. Uh, it turned out pretty good. I think the contours are going to match up very, very well. Now I gotta go and pull it into my modeling pro program, uh, orient it just right, and get the scaling correct. Well, here we are. Uh, this is incredibly exciting. This looks amazing. I checked out the other one and uh, it looks pretty good uh, when it comes to, you know, the actual portion we'll be modeling off of. Um, this portion, as you can see, uh, there's some wonkiness with the rest of it, mostly because it was shiny. Uh, shiny surfaces don't work with photogrammetry, but uh, pretty much every single spot on here that uh, we'll be touching where the spoiler is looks perfect. I'm going to go and take this uh, model right here and use it to scoop out the inside of whatever spoiler that design. I am going to make it kind of extreme because I don't really, I, don't, I can't really get an idea of how it's going to look like in real life. Um, when I'm looking at this model, I need more of the car to really figure out proportions. So I'm probably going to overdo it quite a bit. Uh, so let's go and see how that turns out. Well, this is what I came up with. Uh, it's not the greatest model ever. It was actually very quick. I used a, a loft function. If, if you guys use Blender or anything like that, um, pretty much I, I just made like the side view of what I wanted it to be like. And then I just kind of modified it as I brought it over and just kind of connected them using uh, the loft function. I cut out around uh, the rear light here. And I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to work really well. Now, I'm gonna show you what it looks like without the actual body here, and it's just the trunk spoiler. 
So this perfectly is scooped out in the bottom to go and fit the bottom of the trunk. If I did the scaling correctly, then it should work out really well. It should be about, I don't know, five millimeters. This edge right here should be about five millimeters from the edge of the trunk. And this will overlap a little bit. I think this looks amazing. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna chop it up into some pieces and we'll go and see what it looks like in Prusa Slicer. So here we are in Prusa Slicer. Just so now we can understand the scale of this compared to my Prusa, uh, this is quite a big piece. I don't have a ton of experience with parts this large. I've had multi-part uh, multi you know, prints before um, that were pushing it, but this is definitely way to the extreme. <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do is cut it up and we're gonna cut it up right here in Bruce's Slicer. I'm just pretty much gonna go and put it on its side here and use this cut function. We're gonna go and uh, have the upper part, we're gonna keep, place on cut, lower part, keep, place on cut, boom. Now we got these cut in two. Of course you can see it's still too big, so we're gonna take both pieces, cut them again, and now, we're gonna have to go and cut these up even more. Okay, here we are. Now we got eight pieces. I'm pretty sure I can get two of them on the build plate at a time. So here we are. These are the two middle pieces is where I'm gonna go and start printing. Uh, I have it at 0.3 millimeter draft, you know, print settings. It's not gonna be pretty. This is not meant to be pretty. This is just gonna get it to go and fit the car correctly. Uh, it says about 15 hours here, but I am not going to do that. That just seems like too much. So I'm going to go and bring the infill down to 5%. Um, I'm pretty sure that is going to make the tops a little wonky, a little ugly. I might increase the top layer, uh, layer amount, and um, it, it, it should work. So this is what we're looking at here. We're looking at, what, nine hours of printing? So all together, probably about 40 hours of printing all the pieces together, but I don't know, I'm very excited. I'm going to go and print these pieces, probably glue them together. Maybe we'll go, I'll see you guys uh, before they're done uh, doing something. I'm probably gonna have to go and sand the side, so I'll probably catch up, you, catch up with you guys then. So a huge issue with any print is that nothing is truly flat. Uh, and that is the case with uh, my printer as well. Uh, as you can see here, we got the, the two middle pieces that I glued together and that seam is pretty good. That was the top that had some boogers and stuff on it, uh, just like the top of these, which are the pieces that go on the end of this. So I just took a piece of MDF, get something flat, and get a big thing of sandpaper. This is 320 grit. I wish I had something a little more aggressive and maybe a little faster, but I'm just gonna go and move this around real quick, get it flat uh, and get this other side, which is the bottom, just a little keyed up for glue in the future so I don't have to do it while it's all attached to one another. I got them flat. The infill is only like 5% infill and that makes the tops real lumpy and bumpy. So I knocked those down. I think it looks pretty good. It did lift a little bit here on this edge. This one stayed pretty flat on the build plate, but that one lifted right there. So we'll have a gap. Like I said, this is just PLA. This is just for testing purposes. And if this fits, then we'll get it uh, in a better filament, uh, probably PETG. Okay, so uh, let's take these outside and I'll check them out. I'll see you guys when all the pieces are finished because there's no point in doing this over and over again. I just want to go and get everyone on the same page before I show you this first prototype. Because I am super excited about what I was able to do in 45 hours. That 45 hours includes taping up the back of my car, putting the dots on it, using that photogrammetry app, have it create the model, pull it into the computer, create this half-assed design, print it, and also let the filament run out about four times during that 
40 hours of printing, and then a little bit of sanding. And this is where we're at. I'm super excited about what can be done in less than two days, starting Friday night and ending Sunday afternoon. This is some of the most game-changing technology I've ever used for a simple 3D, home 3D printer. So I want you all to go and see this. This is not the final piece. This is a prototype. This is to go and see if I can go and make an object this big that scaled right and fits the back of a car using only free software such as Blender and this carry engine. So I want you to go and take that. It is not meant to throw on the car now because it doesn't have any ways for hardware that will be added later. It doesn't have any strength, it's PLA, it's not going on the car. But this is a big step. Here it is. This is the front of the spoiler right here. It's not as intense as everyone on my 3D printing Facebook group thinks it is. Everyone thinks it's an air brake. It's not, it's very much similar size to a Art Rocket Bunny kit that you can go and put on a Miata and it fits perfectly. I test fit this during every, after every single print, I made sure that it fit the car. As you can see here, here, and here, and here. All I've done for post-processing is to go and fill a few of the gaps. Uh, these later pieces did peel up a little bit on the very edges uh, on my build plate because I didn't clean it well enough between prints. So I just filled it with super glue and a little bit of baking soda. So how about we take this, bring it outside, and we can go and see at least the first step in making our own body work for this car. So here it is on the car, just simply taped up, just for us to go and uh, get a visual of it. As you can see, it is kind of an intense angle, but overall with the car, I think it looks pretty good. I've already adjusted the final model to have a little bit less of an intense angle, but when you look at it where it touches the car, it fits almost perfectly. I am very excited with this piece. I might adjust the back a little bit to go and give a little more space because I will be adding places for hardware back there, but I don't know. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. And here with it, you know, the whole car at the side, I really dig it. So here we are. Part one done. This is a two part series. I already have modified the model quite a bit from what this is. I have extended the front out here so I have places for hardware because I will be riv nutting it to the back of the trunk. I've modified the rake a little bit of it to go and be more lean back on the car and not as tall. Not too crazy because I really like how it looks, but you know, just, just toned it down a little bit. I did adjust how thick it is back here because it does, does look a little goofy. It's gonna fit to the bodywork a little bit more and have bolts on the back. On either side, I'm going to figure out how many bolts that is, but that's a real quick addition there. But otherwise, I'm going to count this as when it works perfectly. With how little effort I put into actually making the model with that Curie engine to this is it's just insane. We will be making the final product out of PETG. I do have about two rolls of it. It's all been left out in like the humidity, so I definitely have to dry it before using it because it's it's going to be a, you know a nightmare to go and use otherwise. I'm gonna go and glue it together with like epoxy and I got little dowels for woodworking because that's what I bought on Amazon. I don't know why I bought those, but uh, they will be dowels that actually align these a little bit better and give it a little bit more strength. And then we're gonna be covering it in fiberglass, which I don't have much experience with fiberglass at all. Some people say make a mold. I'm not gonna make a mold. I'm not manufacturing this part. It is just gonna go and be PETG on the inside and a few layers of fiberglass. Uh, on the outside, all the way around. That should be enough, I think. I don't know, this is all an experiment, but it will be held together really nicely. Uh, it will be on the back of the car very strongly, so it should work out really great. Very excited with it. So thank you everybody for watching. Subscribe if you wanna go and see part two, where we go and make the final part, and probably more videos as with this technology keeps getting better and better, that Miata is gonna be a test mule for all my future products. So thank you everybody, have a great day.